just for another week for for this episode of the Dutchess Hedeker podcast, where uh, you know I just talk about whatever I want to talk about. I'm Dutchess Hedeker. This is my podcast. Uh, if you want something a little more structured, obviously you can go listen to Mitten Backstage or Life Is a Piano. All of these things to be supported through my Patreon. Um, I normally don't give the spiel at the beginning of an episode, so I thought, why not, since I'm here recording today. <laughs> uh, but thanks for joining me. Um, let's see what we can talk about today. Ah, uh, it's the fall. I'm going to adjust my microphone real quick because it was a little bit too far away. It's a very high-budget show <laughs> where I'm the only person involved. Yeah, it's it's already fall, which is mind-boggling. Like, it, it was super hot, you know, peak summer, just sweating on gigs, being in the sun, um, you know, always being near water, but never going in it, <laughs> always going, yeah, I'll just get one more trip to the beach in one more trip. That didn't happen. <laughs> I, I, I still, I'm holding out that September is going to have, uh, some warmer, warmer, uh, months that I can sneak in a trip. Like as soon as I feel that it's hot and I have some time, I'm going to just hit up some kind of beach. Um, maybe Rosie Mound. I don't know. Ro Rosie Mound in uh, Grand Haven is a you know it's a it's a trail um, and you know nature. I don't know if it's a nature reserve or if it's just like a designated like park or trail walking space. Um, but a lot of people park there uh, because it's it's on the same strip of beach as the Grand Haven Public Beach but it can often be less crowded because it takes a second for you to get to the beach um, from the parking lot. And whereas, you know, the state or the, the main beach in the city, you just can literally almost like pull right up to the water. You just park and get in. Um, but it's fall. It's chilly. <laughs> I'm, I feel like I just got my setup in my room for like summer comfort and now i'm like uh now i have to readjust again and uh, you know treat myself to the things that are 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 so basic to a bed like I, I don't have a comforter um i i only just got new sheets last year um you know i i tried I tried the pillow cube for a while and honestly now that I've actually now that I've lost weight it's not a good pillow <laughs> because when I was when I was heavier and bigger um there I think I just had more of an elevated position laying on my back and the weight of my head resting against the pillow was enough where it would cradle like right in that sweet spot of like my neck and the back of my head. And, you know, it accommodated enough for my hair because it was soft. It's a softer pillow, but now it's, it, all it does is it like forces my head to like always be kind of like arched forward, um, which not good. <laughs> So I, all I have right now for pillows are, I have old, like hypoallergenic pillows that definitely need replacing. They're, you know, they're definitely like five years old. Um, and they're flat. They're just, they're great for like a spare pillow, you know, a pillow I can take on the road. Um, but not, no, they're not good for regular sleep. So I gotta, gotta look into that. Gotta look into, uh, 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 well, I, I have a really nice blanket, actually. I got a, um, I have one that my grandparents made that has a bunch of piano keys, and that one's always nice. Um, that one I might bring here to my office for fall, fall work, just to have a, a warm blanket. Or, you know, if I end up, if if I end up working here and it's you know a snowy night, I can always just like crash here. Um, but 
the yeah the uh the, i have another blanket that um my parents got me i think it was for christmas it's it's a big like like a little bit weighted too so it's like just that extra coziness um yeah i'm gonna have to bust that out but i think of all these things because uh as you're listening to this my birthday <laughs> uh was on friday uh when i'm recording this i am not yet 29 but i am turning 29 or will have turned 29 when y'all hear this so and uh you know thinking of my birthday about my birthday turning 29 i'm not yet 30 but i'm really close um and with the changing of the decade always comes new perspective in 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 my opinion you know some people are like you know i take it year by year you learn something new every week you know you can't put all these put all this emphasis on you know your 30s versus your 40s versus your 50s everyone's got different markers you know capitalism has our <laughs> has our keeping up with the jones mentality you know a lot of my friends are um they're married or proposing um they own homes they have you know certain career achievements that i am still working on um, and you know, as you can tell yourself all the time, like, oh, it's not a race, you know, it's not a competition, but it feels like that a lot of the times because when the converse, like I went to a wedding, I think I mentioned this in a previous episode, but I went to a wedding and a lot of the conversations were just about like, you know, literally all the conversations that I had when I, you know, I'm trying to talk about just things in the world, art, you know, culture, most people just wanted to talk about like, yeah, I got a house. Um, I was renovating the house and uh, that's it. And I'm, I'm like, okay, home ownership. Yeah, cool. Everyone who buys a house renovates it so that, you know, later it fits their tastes and comfort. And then when they outgrow it, whether it's because of multiple kids or they, you know, change of lifestyle, change of scenery, they can sell it hopefully for more than what they paid for. But when you're, you know, you've just been renting <laughs> for your whole life up to this point, um, and not even like all of my 20s, like I didn't move out of my parents' place until after, really until, uh, you know, 20, like the the end of spring 2016. So that was a year after I graduated, um, or just under a year after I graduated Grand Valley, I moved out of my parents' house because there was no there was no need for me to stay on campus. You know, Grand Rapids and Allendale's campuses were connected by public transportation, so I would just drive downtown, park, take the bus. Um, I think it's still the fifty. Um, you know, take the fifty up to Allendale, and to have an easier time. You know, the one less bill to pay. I'm at my parents' house. You know, I still got my room in the basement. Like, that was all that I needed. And I think part of what the keeping up with the Joneses mentality feels like at 29 is trying not to overcorrect when focusing on myself. Because as I've mentioned, I'm, I'm on a journey. <laughs> We're all on a journey. And it's just, oh, wow, I'm on a journey. Like, everyone's on a journey. Um, but it's great to post on Instagram that you have a journey. Uh, I'm on a journey <laughs> to... Uh, and I've told this to other people. Uh, I'm on a journey to find that default setting. 
And what do I mean by that? Think of when you get a computer and it, you know, you, you turn it on, whatever's pre-installed, that's the default, you know, whatever base programs, whatever operating system, whatever, uh, you know, uh, shortcuts, functions, all the things, the default setting. Now, more experienced computer computer users know how to personalize it, whether it's from simple things like changing appearances, changing, um, you know, the layout of things, the organization of files. Uh, then you get, you know, into coding. You know, some people might try new, installing new operating systems or, um, you know, creating creating this 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 new experience. And sometimes when you install new products, things can go weird and then you have to uninstall. And sometimes when you remove too many things, you realize, oh, I still need that program. So you reinstall it. And, you know, that was, I feel like my twenties was, you know, I'm at Grand Valley. I'm a classical, classical, uh, you know, uh, keyboard major. That was my default setting. Then, you know, adding accompanying work. All right, I'm a classical pianist learning solo rep who also has an interest in collaborating as an accompanist. Okay, now I'm in the new music ensemble. Now I'm a classical pianist who has an interest in accompanying but also collaborating in a chamber group playing contemporary music. Okay, but now I'm also taking jazz as an elective. Okay, I'm a classical performance major who, you know, like you start adding on to what was established as your default setting what as you should i think with school school gives you the freedom to fail and and the freedom to try new things and you know coming out of those experiences where it's it's more contained it's not as as public of a failure as you might perceive it's not as damaging sometimes you know i I didn't pass my mid performance review. And I explained that in a, a previous episode of just I, basically I was overworked um, all because of my, the decisions I had made um, and the pressures I was trying to um, alleviate by taking out a lot more work to earn more money. And I ended up not learning my rep for my mid performance review. And that, you know, caused a chain reaction down the line for the last two years of my schooling at Grand Valley. But I graduated on time. So. It all worked out. <laughs> we'll we'll say. Um, I mean, I got the degree, so hey, that's 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 the goal, right? You learn a lot, and music's always a journey, and all that. Uh, but so I think of my default setting now. What does that look like? Um, I have built some habits since March. Um, I've built some habits since graduating Western with my masters. I've built habits since uh, working at Allendale High School. I've built habits since uh, being involved in Earth Radio. I've built habits since making uh, or working on a trio project uh, called Normal Mode. You know, there, there's new settings. There's new programs. There's new software installed on my operating system. And now I have to reconcile all of that. I have to realize, like, what... Uh, what programs are bogging down my CPU or what, what components do I need to upgrade? You know, computer analogy. I, I do a lot of food analogies, so I thought I'd try a computer analogy. But the idea, you know, the fact that you um, uh, have so many opportunities to grow and learn and you take on new tasks and you take on new experiences and you... You open up yourself to all, all array, uh, an entire array of projects. Like, for example, most musicians, is, I guess it's more of a broad statement than an example, but I could use my own life as an example. Uh, but most musicians, we take on various tasks. We're not just performers. We're also teachers. We're also you know, recording engineers. We're also music marketers. We're also, um, you know, uh, promoters, publishers, uh, writers. We're collaborators. We're content creators. And everyone has a different 
a, a mount of all of those skills. Um, some people would argue start with the content because it forces all, like a rising tide raises all ships or whatever the s statement is. Um, so if you learn how to make content, you're learning how to frame shots, edit video, uh, record and mix audio. Um, you're having to think creatively in these small intervals uh, on multiple fronts from how it's presented visually to the audio experience. And some people, you know, they have the slickest packages. They look nice. You know, clothes have a great fit. The vibe and aesthetics are all all finely tuned. Like, oh, it's a minimalist backdrop with, like, a plant and then, like, audio gear. And then, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not harsh lighting. It's a little bit softer, but it's still, it's still presented clean. And that looks nice. And 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 trying to imitate that style it it allows you to learn certain skills you know how to work with camera equipment you know with editing software whether it's for video or audio all these things so what does this have to do with my birthday <laughs> uh like i mentioned finding a default setting in my 20s um is kind of what we all do in our 20s we all have to figure out where we're going, what we like doing, try new things, take on new tasks, figure out what you like, what you don't like. Um, you know, Tony Hawk famously said about, you know, being involved as a skateboarder in, in, in the industry that revolves around um, extreme sports and skateboarding and stuff. He said, you got to know all parts of the business so that you know what you don't want to do, which I took to heart because I don't necessarily like booking. Nobody really, nobody really likes booking. Like they like th the, the, they like the outcomes of booking. They like the building relationships. They like being able to go to new places and experience new avenues, new festivals, new whatever. Like after I, after I record this episode, I'm going to be, you know, launching into what is going to be a six month booking campaign minimum, like six months of booking just like sending emails, starting conversations, getting guarantees, getting, you know, getting a good, a good mix of different gigs that pay the band that, you know, meet new audience members, you know, like I don't want, I want to replace all of the wedding work I did this year with personal product or projects. Cause I still, I still have 10 more weddings. <laughs> I have, I have like a month. Yeah, I have I have a uh, I have two weddings a week um ru on average, you know, some of them I only have one, but for a month um over a month and and uh and a, and a couple scattered dates in the winter. Um and you know, booking is booking for next year starts now basically. Uh, but the default setting I'm trying to find is how do I get in a rhythm and a routine that makes sense for my profession? Because I've never had, I didn't have that in my twenties. I, I, so many things change and you get, you know, it's getting settled in like, like, Oh, the first half of grand Valley. And then the second half of grand Valley, you're more confident. So you're doing more things. And these things happen because of that. And, you know, less of your time is available and, but you're growing in, in, in your skill sets and your network. And then, oh, I, you know, working at Allendale High School, I, you know, expanded my network a little bit more, uh, you know, dip my toes into still being in the education system and then getting the offer to go to Western. All right. What does that look like? Getting a master's. What, what do I want to focus on? What, you know, th all emotional things that I didn't know would pop up, you know, like I, I've been transparent about the fact that I, the first semester I was at Western, I had a big case of like imposter syndrome. I felt like I wasn't living up to the scholarship uh, because I went from taking 15 credits a semester to 15 credits a year. So my schedule was way more open and I was still checking all the boxes of like, yeah, he's doing all the things he needs to do for a scholarship. But in my head, I, f I felt like I needed to constantly be overwhelmed in order to feel like I was working. And that 
didn't help with interpersonal relationships. You know, it, 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 I feel like I met a lot of great people, but didn't invest a lot of time because of the, the, the mental hurdles that I did not know would come up. I had no idea that you, you can only, you can only address things as they are. Um, and I didn't realize how much of my years at Grand Valley uh, must have conditioned me to just expect to always be overwhelmed and to not know what to do with spare time. And um, yeah, and, and then graduating Western and having this interesting sense of like I of accomplishment like I did do a lot of things and a lot of things well and I did make improvement and I f I feel it in my playing and my approach to playing the piano and being and you know my my ears got better my you know improvisation got better my sense of what I need to work on got better um you know cuz music yeah music's a journey um, and then, you know, getting out of school, moving back to Grand Rapids, getting a job working sound for a venue, you know, like founders, like that's, that was a whole thing. And then earth radio was starting to pick up steam and at least, you know, from our, our first album going into our second album writing sessions and, you know, nods from the jammies and you know our musician friends being very supportive and other people starting to catch on like you know it's it's a lot to it's a lot to deal with so when i when i when i say like new default setting it's it's hard because like modern operating systems a lot of updates are required <laughs> a lot of tweaks a lot of a lot of like oh it's version 5.01.06 and it uh it makes uh, text appear uh, normal in these programs, and it uh, co fixes an issue with Microsoft Outlook or something. You know, like you see those updates all the time. Where you're like, did this even fix anything, <laughs> or is it literally just like cosmetic stuff, or w what's even happening, or backend stuff? I won't understand. And the the default setting really just you know, tur turning 29, I, I told myself last year when I turned 28 that I would, I need to get myself set up for my thirties. Um, and that would be my new default setting, getting myself set up for my thirties. Now, does that mean by the, when I turn 30 next year, everything will be figured out? No, it's to change the habits and the thought patterns that keep me from doing more of what I want to do and, and, and less of what is obligated of me. Um, you know, because eventually your utility as an artist can't trump your, uh, ability to create your own art. Um, I've developed a lot of utility as an artist. I've been put in a lot of scenarios. I've been put in a lot of different circumstances that, you know, I have to rise to the occasion I have to learn music in a very, you know, short time span. I have to, you know, f like spend hours in practice rooms or hours late at night. And, you know, the month I've taken off caffeine, the, you know, couple months I've taken off alcohol, you know, the even even beyond that, like I didn't really drink that much in last year. I, I kind of got burnt out from alcohol from working at Founders, but you know, noticing like every time I have a drink, there's going, uh, there's going to be a, uh, some sort of problem. <laughs> there's going to be some sort of thing I have to reckon with the next day and realizing that I can't really have it. Um, caffeine. I didn't realize how much of my life was just propped up by caffeine. You know, I had to kind of stop for the month, uh, after the, the ER visit, they were like, Hey, don't drink caffeine. I'm like, okay. And now I have to really be mindful of how I sleep, how I'm going to sleep, how I'm, you know, when am I waking up? How am I waking up? Is it circadian rhythm? Is it an alarm? It, like, what am I doing? Because most of the times it's I stay up past midnight and I get up before nine, 
sometimes eight. Like this morning, I got up around seven. Sometimes I'll get up at six. There's one day I got up at five because I could, I got up to use the bathroom and I couldn't fall back asleep. So I ended up, I, I went down the street to a, a track and just walked for an hour. And then that kickstarted my day and I got a lot of stuff done in the morning. But then, you know, the afternoon I was very tired and I still kept going. Um, f- you know, I had a, I think that was the same day as a wedding gig. So I had a wedding gig and then we were hanging out with an old friend and I, I, I think I stayed uh, the, the total hours spent awake was like 21 hours <laughs> and I was just exhausted. And then, you know, thinking like, okay, yeah, you know, I've done this before I, I could bounce back. It took a couple days for me to feel like normal again. And partially because I just exacerbated the, the fatigue. So now I have to address you know, the habits that I, th- I think are like, yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm young. And it's like, well, I still need to get healthier. Like, you know, youth only goes so far. That's why a lot of youth, you know, that I seem to see are, are, you know, they're, they're, they're fueled by a, a propping up of some sort of substance, caffeine, alcohol, drugs, you know, cigarettes, like there's some, something that keeps the the like their default setting is i need nicotine i need thc i need alcohol i need caffeine i need something that'll counterbalance whatever i'm trying to counterbalance social anxiety uh you know being being able to work longer hours um you know uh, being open to the party i don't know <laughs> Like, it just seems like a lot of extra work. It's like, it's like if you, you know, it's like when you buy gear and you think that buying, you know, the people that aren't good at their instrument, but they think like, oh, if I buy this piece of gear, it'll change everything. You know, I'll buy this $8,000 keyboard and that'll make me amazing and I'll go on tours. And it's like, no, you just bought an $8,000 thing where you still sound the same. You just have different patches and you don't really know how to use the keyboard <laughs> or a guitarist do this a lot they buy you know like an abasi concepts or like a strandberg or you know all these metal players buying these th- these higher quality guitars and then you know they spend six grand on this guitar and they still are playing garbage <laughs> and they don't practice and they're like i thought this would make me sound better this sounds terrible it's like no you sound terrible bruh like what are you talking about <laughs> Like go what if you buy an Abasi concepts and then you don't go to Toes and Abasi's page and see how he's practicing all these different styles on different types of guitars. He's not just playing his Abasi concepts, even though those are his favorite. He's like working on the blues on like a more appropriate guitar. He's working on jazz. He's working on, you know, extended techniques. He's writing. He's recording. You know, the dude the dude's got a rhythm to how he works on on music. And that doesn't even mean he practices every day. He just knows how to dial in moments of creativity, moments of working, all that stuff. So I guess with my birthday, um, it feels weird because we're still in pandemic land and we're, you know, places are experiencing surges again. Um, And celebrating my birthday is, is on my birthday never really happens. Um, I have a, actually a wedding gig on my birthday, so I'll make some money, but, um, I'm planning on seeing, I'll have seen Mark Rebier, um, in his, you know, loop daddy positivity. <laughs> and then, um, I'll, you know, get together with the folks probably when this airs today. Um, we were talking about it this past weekend, but, you know, as birthdays continue, I, I don't really hold any expectations. Um, I think a lot of people that happens to a lot of people, they grow out of like the, the importance of a birthday. Some people, they, they just take it to an extreme place. And it's like, it's my birth month. It's my birth year. <laughs> it's just, you must pay attention to me. You I want to go. And, and like, what? What? <laughs> I'm just like picturing, I'm picturing the type of person, like the, 
the the gal who like is dressed up like a princess and she's got all her friends and they have to pay attention to me and she's dressed like a a princess with her little tiara and like maybe a sash that says birthday g- girl and they go to you know the same bar and then you know oh wow we get a free dessert and oh they got me a free shot oh I got the place and then all they do is they do the same thing they would do on a Friday night just screaming it's my birthday it's like just stop just stop Becky just go home you're drunk you've never stopped drinking you're a bad you're a bad influence <laughs> get get out of here. Uh, who cares? Oh, you turned, turned. Oh, it's the dirty thirty. Uh, I want you to stop. <laughs> I want it to end. Stop, please. You're hurting everyone. <laughs> like you can't, ju- you can't have that energy in your fifties either. Like, like I'm all for people like getting together with friends and celebrating a birthday. You know, it's a good, it's a good checkpoint. It's a good marker. It's a, you know, it's a birthday. It's a, you can make an excuse, but some people use that to the extreme. Anything in an extreme like that is, is pretty crazy. I, I'm, I'm just happy that I'm, you know, just moving forward. And every year I've learned something and I can reflect on the past year and be proud of my accomplishments while also understanding, you know, that there's still more work to be done. And that's life. You just, you just realize that you've done a lot of cool things or you you want to do cool things and you start to make more time for them. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm happy that it's, it's my birthday. I'm happy that I'm around to celebrate it. I'm happy that I have people to celebrate it with, um, and ways to celebrate it. Uh, but I also, you know, in in pandemic land it's another it's just another week <laughs> it's like you know the the work that's been put into the last year and a half is cannot be understated it's it's crazy i i i feel for every person who's been struggling out there i feel for every musician who's had canceled gigs canceled tours i've had those um you know i ju- i've seen people who are just now getting back to work uh, for sound companies and they're going on tours and even that is still up in the air because some people have announced tours and then they cancel them because of, you know, either the, the places they were going are experiencing surges or they can't travel, uh, you know, or they get sick themselves, you know, it's, it's, it's all up in the air. And, you know, as, 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 as angry as you might be and commenting on an artist thing, like I paid, I paid $40. Where is my $40? You, and you canceled the tour. This affects me. And it's like, bruh, do you not, do you not have empathy for a, for a, a touring apparatus to can to cancel? Like, there, that's multiple people who don't have work. That's not just like your favorite band, like isn't playing in your in your town or in the next town over, like, y- like, just just be patient. Like we're all trying, <laughs> all of us are trying. We're all trying to find those gigs, and some people, you know, they had the calendar wide open and other people have had zero, you know, barely any gigs. Some people only recently have had their first gigs back. So they went through the whole summer with no gigs. You know how, you know how hard that must feel for them to see like their peers being able to play even a festival or a gig. And they're, you know, they're unable to play either because of a health condition or, you know, they took a job during the pandemic and they can't, you know, they, they haven't, carved out time to like get back on the music grind because they they have bills to pay you know it's crazy that it, it there's so many things surrounding my birthday that are way more important um you, you know even though i'm happy that i'm 29 it's it's a lot of work <laughs> it's a lot of work in the next few months and i'm sure it'll all unfold um in ways that i'll I'll appreciate, but also, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of not seeing people and, you know, I'm going to get some blue light glasses because I'm going to be looking at a lot of computer screens. Um, 
So if <laughs> uh, what a way to end a happy birthday. Um, I appreciate you listening to this and uh, hopefully you learned something, whether it's about me or I don't know, maybe something I talked about resonated with you. Let me know. Uh, leave it in you know the comments on YouTube. Um, you can also direct message me on social media platforms or my contact form on my website. Um, I like having these discussions with folks. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a great birthday, <laughs> holiday, some little respite from the chaos of life and the doom scrolling and the comparative keeping up with the Joneses on the internet which you know extends keeping up with the joneses to literally every jones in the entire planet and you're like why am i not that jones and instead of looking at your own life and being like wow i have done a lot of cool things and i should just continue to like build on what i like doing and you know invest time and energy in the people who invest time and energy in you and stop worrying about the haters anyway <laughs> um happy birthday to me <laughs> leave a happy birthday if you want to wish me a happy birthday and uh you know next week uh we'll see what's up with this podcast you know who knows what i'll talk about but thanks again um and uh we'll see you next time in another episode of the dutch Stedker podcast <laughs>